Karen Neverin is one of Ireland's up-and-coming conductors, and we are very excited to welcome her for the first time to the Irish Chamber Orchestra for our Christmas concert. We've got a special programme this year, and of course, we've got some traditional carols, but I'm going to leave it to Karen to tell you what is exactly in store. <laughs> What a programme we have lined up for you. Of course, as Matthew mentioned, we have your traditional carols. You'll hear your O Holy Night. You'll hear your Silent Night. We've got Corelli's Christmas Concerto in there as well. But we've got two gems that you might not know. We've got Finzi's Dies Natalis, which literally translates to the Day of Birth. This is a cantata and we're singing the third movement, Wonder, which is all about an angel coming down and you can imagine the themes that link up with Christmas there and we have our own angel Eilish Tynan joining us this wonderful soprano from Mullingar whose voice really is angelic and what a wonderful character she is as well. Eilish is not only performing that but she'll also sing Mozart's Exultate Jubilate as well and that literally translates to exult and rejoice putting you in the festive spirit. This piece was written by Mozart around the age of 16, 17 and at that same time he was writing and performing an opera called Lucio Silla. In that opera was a castrata called Brauzzini and Mozart really really loved his voice and wrote Exultate Jubilate for him and it's all about the voice how I guess the gymnastics of the voice it really shows it off and that's what we'll be doing with Eilish absolutely showing off her spectacular voice throughout the program but I'm most looking forward to these two gems. Now over the last kind of four years or so I think I've interviewed over 200 people in the Oboe Winterfree series for the Irish Chamber Orchestra but you are the first female conductor. I'm really curious to know what your music background was like and what made you decide to become that person who was going to stand in front of a whole orchestra and conduct? Uh, what a privilege to be the first, Matthew. Thank you very much. Uh, my, <laughs> my background was all Irish music. I grew up playing the tin whistle at the age of three and my family are all Irish musicians, so I guess I never considered you know, learning it. It was just something that we all did together. And as we were doing it, we really now on reflection, we're playing chamber music. You know, we were playing and learning from memory by ear, playing together in sessions and really moving, which is what we try to get, you know, young orchestral players to do all the time to really play and listen to each other. And I brought those skills with me. And as I got a little bit older and into my teenage years, I had the privilege of learning the clarinet. And that was my first sort of view into classical music. I was playing classical piano but it's a very solitary thing you know when you play with other musicians you really get that feeling and I was watching the conductor and thinking I can do that you know he was fixing things and making sure everybody was in the right place I've learned since then that there's a lot more to it than that but at its most basic you know that's what was there and I thought I really want to do this and as I was learning Irish music I was also the piano player for our Cayley band and you know those of you that know the Cayley band set up is like the piano player and the drummer who is my brother we set the tempo and we held everything together and essentially again they're the basics of being a conductor so very naturally one kind of fed into the other but it's funny because as I mentioned my family all play Irish music there's no classical musicians in the family so I was definitely the black sheep and as things progressed I just thought yeah that's the path I want to go I knew it was a challenge I knew there was a lot I needed to know and I was really consumed by having to learn every single line and I was just very lucky then I had brilliant teachers and training throughout and I have to say the female aspect of it really never struck me and there was this beautiful moment in 2013 I was at the proms I had been for a week queuing up on the steps getting my promers ticket every day but this one concert I knew I really wanted to attend so I'd splashed out and spent maybe I don't know 30 pounds which as a student was quite a lot on a ticket to this concert which was Marin Alsop with the Age of Enlightenment Orchestra and my friend was with me and she walked out on stage and obviously I was very excited for the concert but all of a sudden I was completely overwhelmed by emotion and I was crying and my friend looked at me and said 
God, you're crying. Are you okay? And I said, yeah, I, I have no idea. I really can still remember that feeling of just tears flooding, but really not knowing why. And he said to me, have you ever seen a female conductor before? I said, actually, no, I haven't. And again, that hadn't crossed my mind. I wanted to see Marion work and her work as a conductor, but I, I hadn't kind of clicked the gender thing at all. Marin has since become a huge mentor. I'm not sure I've told her this story actually, but it was really a turning point where I thought about it. And again, I was just really lucky. I had wonderful people and teachers and still do in my life. And you know, you always have the one or two small things and we have to fight for gender equality across all sectors. But I consider myself very lucky to be following in paths of people that have already sort of broken those ceilings for us. Absolutely. Now, finally, I love asking people this. What are you most looking forward to about the ICO experience and also our concerts? For me, it goes back to that, you know, beginning of Irish music. And as a conductor, I consider myself very collaborative and open. And, and that's how I always want to be when I go into an orchestra. But, you know, sometimes you're doing Shostakovich with 90 musicians on stage and you can't be. You just have to say how you want it and steer that ship and listen to the solos. But working with the ICO really gives you that Kaylee Band experience, if you will, of taking the energy from the players and really feeling the music and listening to it and dancing together. And I'm excited to bring my ideas of the music and to receive the players' ideas, because for me, that's what music making is all about, doing it together. And of course, I've heard the ICO many, many times and to be standing in the middle of that sound with such open, warm people is just really, really special. And then I think the icing on the cake is our final concert is in the village of Ferns County Wexford, which I never thought I would say. I'm now living in Ferns. And so to be able to walk to work and to bring one of, you know, the gemstones of Irish music to my home to show my family and friends. And again, I can't even call it a town. My village <laughs> is just so special. I never thought I would have an orchestra in Ferns, let alone be conducting one. And to welcome you all to the village, I think is just the best Christmas gift. Karen, we, I have to say we are all really, really looking forward to it. And hopefully there'll be some nice sandwiches on the menu as well for us when we come to <laughs> County Wexford. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me today. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Matthew. Looking forward to having you. And uh, my mother's on the sandwich duty already. She's got it covered. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks a lot, Karen. Bye-bye. See you. Take care. Bye-bye.